did uh, wave. Uh, this is Rowan, and uh, I guess in uh, one of my uh, two videos ago, I guess my uh, my raves for some reason were popular. I don't know why. I don't know why. I just. I braid my hair usually before bed. Um, sometimes if it's very late and I'm very tired, I'll just um, bring it all back in a bunch with a uh, with a scrunchie or a one of the large uh, covered um, rubber band things. The, uh, But, uh, but now, ideally, I do want to, uh, uh, braid it, and I can French braid my own hair, apparently, and, um, and sometimes I do indeed sing Linda Belcher's song of, here goes the hair, there goes the hair. Where is Harry Truman? He's dead in the ground. He's dead in the ground. He's dead, 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 dead. Ow! Here goes the hair, and there goes the hair. And where is Harry Truman? Uh, but uh, no, the uh, the reason I do so is first off, I have long hair, and uh, my hair is. Uh, 1B, 1C, as far as texture goes, this means it is fairly straight, though there is a little bit of a body wave when left to its own devices. Um, I've noticed uh, after I get out of the shower, um, if I do um, add some argon oil uh, after I'm out of the shower to... Uh, um, 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 what's that? Uh, help protect the, uh, the, the, the cuticle. Um, I will get a little bit more of a wave, so a little bit, like, maybe beyond 1C wave, but, um, but without the argon oil, it's, it's about 1B, 1C, so a little bit of a crisp wave to it. That, uh, um, and contrary to common belief, um, the straighter your hair is, the more prone it is to being tangled, and specifically, um, um, like when you're trying to detangle, it'll, uh, rip out, uh, or it'll, it'll cause more damage to detangle than, um, than curlier hair does, and that's because uh, curlier hair, the uh, the cuticle grows out uh, very very flat, like uh, like like a ribbon almost. Whereas you know like like a ribbon almost. Whereas um, 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 the straighter the hair, the more round the cuticle grows, and so uh, so when it so when it, so when the uh, the curlier hair um, grows out, you know very flat like that, like, um, it kind of helps itself by, like, forming into little ringlets like it does, and you see this on especially curly hair, um, that it'll, uh, in fact, uh, um, so, um, but no, like, when, when the hair is straight, um, it, it can get tangled fairly easily, so, you know, and this happens more often when you're sleeping, and I, I have not cut my hair in, I want to say it was the same winter, um, Nigel moved in, and he, he moved in, it's, uh, if you want to see the, uh, the video about my, where I introduced you to all three cats, though I could probably stand to update that. It's been, yeah, it's been at least a year since I did that one, so.
Um, the cats are a year older. But I do give the, uh, I give the story of Nigel and how he came to live with us, and he basically invited himself in when he was about four months old. But yeah, you can go see the uh, the full story, or at least as it is to date, or to date a year ago. <laughs> uh, I should uh, remember, if I forget to link the video in the description box, uh, please remind me and I'll go back and put it in. But then what happens is, um, so yeah, I haven't cut my hair in a little over six years because um, Nigel is seven approximately this month. Uh, so we estimated when I took him in that, uh, that, that December to be neutered, and he was, like I said, he was about a four-month-old kitten, and even with this low-cost Spain neuter clinic in Lansing, like we were living at, at the time, that still cost money. So low-cost, still cost. So it was, it was about six weeks before I was able to bring him in to be neutered, and he was, like, uh, like a hair over six pounds, um, when we took him in, and I remember the date we took him in because it was my mother's birthday, but she had died, so. Um, so then what happens is, um, another reason that I, um, so yeah, my hair has been growing for seven years this December, thereabouts, um, but yeah, another reason that I tend to braid my hair up at night um, especially before I go to bed, as I'm about to in a bit, is because Phoebe likes to eat my hair. And while this does not completely deter her, I've woken up on occasions where, like, um, she doesn't do it so much lately, not this last year. Yeah. Um, definitely not so much while I'm asleep since Isaac moved in and, like, she didn't get back in the habit after he moved out, so that's nice. But, um, so yeah, not so much this last year and some. Uh, she hasn't been doing that much, which is good, but, uh, but still, it's, I, I, I don't want her to get back in the habit. Uh, she likes to eat my hair, like, given half a chance, she will, like, nip, like, chew on my hair while I'm sleeping, and I don't know why. Um, I, she is the reason that I have to keep my hair brushes, um, in, so they're all in the bathroom, but I've also put up those, uh, those little command hooks with the little strips that you, like, um, they're sticky, and then you, like, pull them off when you want to move them, and then you gotta get the refill pack, but, so yeah, I put up the little, uh, the little hooks on the things so that I can hang them up, so when they're hanging up, they're less likely to fall off the counter in the bathroom and end up on the floor and where Phoebe can eat the hair right out of them. And don't tell me that, you know, it wouldn't be an issue if, if I just pulled the hair out of my brush every time, because you probably don't do that either, so... <laughs> and why would I have to do that every time when I can just reach across the counter and hang it up on the wall? <gasps> yeah, so, um... So yeah, that's, uh, that's the thing with my hair and putting it in braids at night. Um, I don't know, that's about it. Um, yeah, I had a couple video ideas, and I will get to them. You've noticed that I do eventually get to my video ideas. Uh, long story short, chores have been backed the hell up over here because we are just... Uh, coming out of that really chaotic period with the, uh, with the bed bugs, and, uh, thankfully this, uh, this, this coffee table, knock wood, cause, yeah, I, I know it's a superstition, it's not one I necessarily hold, but when you, when, when you, when your ex leaves you with bed bugs, y you know what you know what kind of pain that Dame Judy Brunch was explaining to Linda in that episode of Bob's Burgers? Half my conversations these days come back around to, of, like, referencing Bob's Burgers. Like, I'm talking, like, real-life conversations with my friends. Like, this is... It, it's... <laughs> uh, it's... It's slightly more current than... Uh, that, than, than my friend Scott, especially when he and I were, were still dating for that six years. Oh, God, yeah. Most of 
five or six years he and I were dating, um, and about half of our conversations were somehow mystery science theater references. Um, Oh, yeah, Bedbugs at uh, Dame Judy Brunch. So, uh, yeah, and, and, uh, and Dame Judy Brunch, he says to Linda that uh, with the brunch skunks, that, like, once you have some brunch skunks in your restaurant, they're all but impossible to get rid of. It's like bedbugs, Linda. And, she, and she's like, oh, no, brunch skunks. And, yeah, that's, that is, that, like, I now feel Linda's pain because... Uh, because, yeah, and, um, so yeah, you, you, like, e even so superstitions that you don't normally hold to, and I have a few of them that I do that just might, might seem a little bit weird to your average person, but you just figure, well, it's, it may not help, but it doesn't hurt to try, right? Because a anything, like, I, I do not want to give them the idea that they can just move right back in, right? Uh, because, because, yeah, um... After you deal with that, uh, I'm hopefully, again, hopefully bug-free for the first time in, oh, God, when did Isaac move in? Late December of 2017, so yeah, um, it was confirmed that we were full of bugs by early March, and he tried to blame it on the antique shop where I got this cabinet, which now that we do seem to be bug free, I can get to work on this cabinet and what I plan to do with it. I've got these beautiful um, mirror tiles. Uh, I'm if if you've watched enough Mad Men, you've probably seen at least I've seen a couple of scenes where I think it was Don Draper's. Um, little, like, divorce apartment. I don't know. I kind of lost track of that show about midway through season four, or was it early season five? I don't know. At some point, I lost track of the show, and I know it ended, and one of these days, I intend to finish watching it, but that has not been any time soon, apparently. It's not high up on my priorities, but uh, you've probably seen, I, I remember there were a couple scenes that I would see videos, uh, that I would see um, stills of, and it would, um, the, uh, the gold, um, the mirrors, about, like, 12 by 12 inch squares, and there was this gold veining work on them. Well, I was, I was looking for those, and I was looking for those for about a year and a half before I knew exactly what I wanted to do with them. I was just looking for them on eBay, just, like, you know, put them in my watch list on the eBay auctions, and yes, Kat, there are snacks in this but you have dinner. Like, you have dinner, I'm gonna put the snacks away. Um, and there, uh, so yeah, I was looking for about a year and a half and just like put them on my watch list and I would be able to find um, um, a set, like I would often find unused, like dead stock sets for, you know, like maybe 50 to $75 um, used sets that still had the little, uh, the little sticky tack on the back after they'd been carefully pried off of whatever wall, uh, the person was redoing in the house, and, um, uh, resold in, like, um, lots of six tiles, easily for, like, 30 to 50, maybe 60 dollars. I was able to find them so easily for about a year and a half never picked them up because I didn't know what I was going to do with them yet, and I don't want to, like, my dad had some hoarding tendencies that, thankfully, my mother and my stepmother were able to, like, reel into a reasonable amount, and I see, um, I see little instances in myself where, um, I seem to have, like, unintentionally picked up some of those habits, but it's also hard for me to um, keep a reel on myself because of back pain, so uh, things get to be a little bit of a mess, and it's not because I don't want to clean or I don't, you know, or, or I'm fine with it. 
it's because uh, uh, yeah, it's not because all the trash is oddly comforting somehow. It's because I hurt too much to move. But you know, if I'm collecting stuff without uh, without without a goal in mind, this is hoarding, all right. Uh, when I'm still thinking, okay, I want to do something with these, but I don't know what, so I'll just like watch a few auctions just to keep an eye on the price. Um, you know, then then it's just like, okay, I'm I'm a crafty DIYer. I just have a bunch of ideas that you know uh, that I can't. That sometimes it takes me some time to put the ideas into motion. So uh, I stopped watching um, listings for the gold vein tiles for the better part of a year, and then I picked up this cabinet. Well, first I saw the cabinet, and then I bought it, like, maybe about a month later, because I made two payments at that uh, at that particular shop. And, um, so yeah, I made two payments on the cabinet, picked it up. Uh, when I saw it, I knew exactly what I wanted to do with these mirrors. So, after I got the cabinet, then I start looking for the tiles again, and suddenly the price has tripled on them. And fortunately, I was able to find some that, uh, after postage, came to $40. It was a set of 10, I believe, but it's not the, uh, it's not the typical veining work that you see with, uh, you know, like some, I don't even think it was real gold leaf most of the time. I think it was just a, uh, cheap, uh, paint, though. Some of the nicer ones, that would indeed be gold leaf, but these are, um, they're kind of a swirl design. Uh, if I was wearing pants and felt like editing some more, I would go up and get them, but I will, uh, I don't know, I'll save that until I, another video. I just wanted to, uh, do a quick little, uh, Thing about the braids, and then I got talking about um, upcoming projects and how um, I am a little bit backed up on various chores because I just I just feel like this last couple of weeks I've finally been able to relax. You know that I'm not. I, I still kind of am periodically like. Um, you know, like the fan will blow something onto a limb or something, and I'll go and check, and then like recheck like 10 seconds later just to make sure it's not a bug. But, um, but other than, other than that, uh, I, I, I feel like I've finally been able to relax some, and so, like I said, things have been chaotic, um, plus my therapist ended up unintentionally ghosting me. That's a story time video in and of itself. Not a very long one, but kind of a vaguely entertaining in a almost shot at, like Schadenfreude adjacent kind of way. Um, but yeah, like I said, it was completely unintentional on her part, and uh, so yeah, I like not only did I have some med adjustment that I needed to do, um, which. Uh, was was needed, but also there's the fact that um, my psychiatrist and I um, we weren't really considering all of the stress I was under with the exterminator, and, and he still had like a couple more visits to do at the time that we did make that, um, not the one that I just had with her a couple weeks ago, but the one prior to that, like she and I hadn't really thought about it. <laughs> that it might have been a little bit too soon to make uh, an adjustment to the dosage of the Adderall at the same time I was reducing um, one of my anti-anxieties and um, um, doing away with St. John's wort until, um, until um, maybe like late autumn, early winter. We'll see if the, uh, we'll see if the seasonal depression kicks in again, uh, this year, um, but other than that, we were gonna, you know, like, try going off the St. John's Wart, and so, yeah, like, we just did, <laughs> we did, like, three med adjustments, 
at a time when I was going to be under some extra stress. So that was that was that was a thing that happens sometimes, and and it's one of those things. It's just like it doesn't really occur to us because um, you know, it's just like a couple things that you, you know you just might take for granted sometimes. It's like oh yeah, you know, well stuff's going on, but sure, whatever. Let's just adjust the meds right now. Um, but yeah. And, um, oh, and the cats have been in shifts lately, like, because they, they know that I've been decompressing, and it's, it's very nice of them. They're very sweet cats. They're good cats, and sweet cats, and love cats, and love the cats. Are you wonderful? So, kinda. You're not Nigel, though. He has started, so, before, before, uh, before Isaac moved in, before I got this one, um, I would go to bed, and I would call for Nigel, and Nigel would come up into bed with me, and I'd just be like, Nigel, and he'd come up into bed with me, and then, um, then I got this one, and it was around the time Isaac, uh, was moving in, and I remember, uh, yeah, I remember, it was around the time Isaac um, moved in, maybe just a little before, I, um, this one, Murnau, he figured out that when I go to, that when I go to bed, I call for Nigel, and he can jump up instead and get all the pettins that Nigel gets, and so it's kind of just, I haven't really gotten out of the habit of calling for Nigel when I go to bed, because... <laughs> And so instead, like, I, I call, I still call for Nigel when I'm get, when I'm getting into bed, and Murnau comes up instead, and I look at him and I say, "You're not Nigel, go, you're not Nigel, Nigel," and then he like puts his like face like right into my hands, and I'm like, "You're not Nigel," and Nigel just kind of like I don't know, I think I think Nigel's just decided, you know what, the, the, just fuck the kitten. <laughs> Uh, Nigel still knows he's my favorite, it's just this one is, is greedy, he's a little jerk. He is, I know he's cute and fluffy, but he's a little jerk. A couple weeks ago, he, uh, uh, no, like not even, like not even two weeks ago, like a week ago, I'm sitting on the couch here, Phoebe's in my lap, being all sweet, and just being my sweet little lap lady, and Murnau just comes up out of nowhere, sticks his nose right up in her butt. She shoots her head right up and jumps down and wanders off and he decides to get in my lap instead. So he's a jerk. He's a jerk. <laughs> he's a cute jerk, but he's a jerk. Yes, you are. Yes, you are, Murnau. Don't deny it. Don't deny it. Yes, you. Alright, well, bats and kisses, and I've rambled on far, far too much, so take care of yourselves, and yes, and have exactly the kind of day you deserve, and all that. Right, kitty? You never have the kind of day you deserve, because you're a jerk, but you always have a great day, don't you? Yes, you do. Well, I mean, if you're a kitty, you can just have a great day anyway, and I'll probably forgive you, but... <laughs> Alright, take care. Bye-bye.